In this video, we're going to take a look at the SOK battery heated series and the Epoch battery heated series. Now with these two batteries, if you notice on the case, we have lithium iron phosphate printed on the battery. And on the Epoch battery, we have Li-ion, which means lithium ion. Now lithium ion means different things to different people. So I'm here to try and clear up what lithium ion actually means. I have a lithium iron phosphate prismatic cell and I also have a 18650 cell, which is an NMC cell. So out of all of these batteries here you see in front of you, which ones do you think are lithium ion battery? Now, I would like you to pause this video and go in the comment section below and tell me which one of these batteries you think is a lithium ion battery. So go ahead, pause the video and comment down below and no changing your answer after you comment. Okay, I hope you all have your comments in and drum roll. All of these batteries are lithium ion batteries. The NMC battery is a lithium ion battery and the lithium iron phosphate battery is a lithium ion battery. When people say lithium ion, it's not a chemistry of battery, it's the lithium batteries in general. So if we break down the term lithium ion, the Li is actually for an element on the periodic table that stands for lithium, obviously enough. And the dash ion part of it is any atom or group of atoms that bears one or more positive or negative electrical charges. So when people talk about lithium ion, which is what's printed on this case here, all it means it's a lithium battery. It doesn't mean that it's NMC chemistry of battery. When I did a review on this battery, I had a few comments of that, well, that's an NMC battery. Why would I pick that and not lithium iron phosphate? Well, I've done a teardown on both of these batteries, the SOK battery. I've opened up the cover and we've checked all the internals and everything's great. And the Epoch battery, we also opened it up, looked at the internals and it's lithium iron phosphate used inside of the battery. Even if we look at the specification sheet, of the Epoch battery, you can see that the chemistry is stated as lithium iron phosphate. Unfortunately, because it has lithium ion printed on the case, it has a little bit of a stigma attached to the battery. People thinking that it's an NMC chemistry and not a lithium iron phosphate chemistry. I believe the reason why this stigma happened is because when lithium first came onto the market in like Nokia cell phones, it was always marketed as lithium ion. It was never marketed as NMC. So the lithium ion nomenclature got attached to NMC batteries. And then when lithium iron phosphate came on the market, everybody just established lithium ion as being NMC and lithium iron phosphate as being lithium iron phosphate and not lithium ion. So little confusing. Me personally as well, I also thought that lithium ion meant NMC chemistry. So even I was a little bit confused on this topic, but since looking into it due to comments, thanks to you guys on my videos, looked into it and realized that no, lithium ion actually just means lithium battery. So with that out of the way, let's take a look at these two batteries. These two batteries are both heavy contenders. Both of these batteries are a little bit higher in the price range than some of the other batteries on the market. And that's due to the quality and overall durability of these two batteries. They're both fantastic batteries. I'm not knocking one over the other. You will be satisfied with either one of these if you decide to purchase them. I have my own preferences and I'm gonna share them with you. If you go online as of recording this video, these two batteries are basically at the same price point. I believe this one here is about $9 cheaper than the Epoch. So we're not talking about a drastic difference in price here. What's amazing is that this SOK battery, to me, it's in a metal enclosure. It is designed very well. My only downsides that I find with the SOK is you cannot series connect the SOK battery into a larger pack like a 12 volt or a 48 volt. The BMS MOSFETs will not handle this. You can go on their website and see they do state that the SOK cannot be seriesed up to a larger pack. Now the Epoch on the other hand, this can be seriesed up to a 48 volt or 24 volt, whatever you would like. They also sell the exact same engineered battery in a 24 volt pack and also a 48 volt pack. So you don't need to buy 
multiple of one battery, you can just buy the battery that you need for the voltage, or you could series them up. Both of these batteries have Bluetooth. The Epoch battery, I think, has a little bit better of an app than the SOK battery. In fact, let's check those out right now. So this is the SOK app. It is actually ABC BMS. That's what it's called. So we have the MOSFETs, charging and discharging allowed. We have the voltage, there's zero current, uh, cycle time, and we have the overall amp hour capacity. It's not in a protective state, the heat's not on. We have the temperature sensor, we have the version, and we have a bunch of different information, maximum voltage, and we have the cell differences on the app. So now let's take a look at the Epoch app. Okay, now you can see on the Epoch app, looks a little bit nicer. We have a nice dial at the top, and we have all of our same stats basically we had with the SOK, and we have all of our cell differences, and we have our charge cycles, our maximum voltage, so pretty much the same app as the uh, SOK one. Uh, so one difference between these two batteries is that this is in a 12 volt configuration and this is a 24 volt configuration, but I looked up online and the case size for their 12 volt heated battery, which is the exact same engineering that went into this battery, is the exact same case size. So for representation of what it's gonna look like in a 12 volt configuration, I can use this 24 volt battery. That's why you're seeing a voltage on there of 26.3. It's just due to it being a 24 volt configuration, but the 12 volt, like I said, is the same size. Just looking at the two of them, I think this one looks a lot more rugged than the SOK. The SOK, we just have a black steel case, which actually is a bit of a downfall I find in the SOK is that this case is actually can be conductive. So if you were to have a lug or a wire fall off and contact this case and another one in another location, you could have a connection of power basically and you can run into issues that way. Whereas this case is plastic or some sort of polymer or some sort of PVC. So this case here is non-conductive. So that's gonna be helpful, a point for Epoch. Another thing is that this battery here, you're gonna to need to be able to secure it yourself. So you're gonna to have to build something out, some sort of strap to hold this battery in. And the Epoch battery actually has these nice mounting points here built right into the case. So you can bolt this case down to the floor. It's on all four sides. So you can bolt this down wherever you're gonna be using this battery. Um, this battery here is actually a marine grade battery. So you could use this on a boat. Uh, you can use this on a yacht or wherever you're gonna to wanna to install it. We have an actual sealed top here that has a gasket inside of it that's gonna keep water out of this case. Where's the SOK? you cannot use in a marine application. You're gonna to have to put it in some sort of enclosure that's gonna keep it dry and out of the water. Whereas the Epoch, you do not have to. Looking at the top of these two batteries, something that I've noticed is the terminal lugs. They're both relatively the same size for contact area for your lugs to sit on. But one difference I've noticed on the SOK, they have the sides covered, which some people may see as a benefit. It's more protection. But one thing that I will show you all is that if you have a charger that have clamps on it, uh, you can't exactly clamp onto it to charge. Whereas with the Epoch battery, you can very easily clamp onto it to charge. So that's gonna be another bonus, I think, for the Epoch battery. Also on the Epoch battery, we have these two ports here. I believe one is a CAN port and the other one is a charging port. So in here we have a couple of communication ports which the SOK does not have. And also with the Epoch battery, it also comes with this little display. So I believe it plugs into this port. And there you go. So this display you can mount wherever you want in your RV or in your boat and it's gonna give you a readout. And this is not coming off of the voltage, this is actually coming off of the accumulated amps going in or out of your battery. So this is gonna give you a very detailed view of what you have for charge left in your battery. And you can see down here printed on the case, we have an IP67 rating. We also have a flame resistant rating as well on this battery, whereas the SOK, we don't. As you can tell throughout this video, I'm definitely leaning toward the Epoch batteries being a better battery at this present moment 
because when I went on both of their websites and I noticed they were basically at the same price point, I was pretty shocked. So SOK, definitely a fantastic battery. You will not be disappointed if you decide to purchase one. I just wanted to throw an option out there for all of you if you're in the market for a heavy contender battery that is well built and is in virtually indestructible. Both of them are great. I will leave links on the description of this video for both of these batteries. I implore you to check out both of them and let me know what you think in the comment section below. And as always, thank you for watching. Please like this video before you go and subscribe and I will be making more content soon. Thank you for watching. Bye.